Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another news video. Our first tier of the news and probably the most important is that the SV Cheats 1 exploit is back. If you don't know, back in the day there was an exploit where you could enable SV Cheats on any server using just a custom HUD. It allowed you to have wall hacks with no risk. Valve fixed this exploit after 2 months. We thought the exploit was completely gone, but it's not. Instead of using a custom HUD, this new exploit is done by using the workshop submission menu. I won't go into detail on how it's done, but I will leave this video by LED who talks about it in detail. I hope people will not abuse this and that Valve will fix it quickly. Until that happens, just know that if you get shot randomly as a spy while invisible, there's a chance that they might be using this exploit to see you. Honestly, I wouldn't risk using this exploit. Valve probably wouldn't punish anyone, but if you do this on a community server, you will get banned immediately since most community servers have anti-cheat plugins that actually check what commands you're running. Just keep that in mind too. Next, we have another big piece of news. El Maxo is quitting TF2 and will no longer upload any more TF2 videos. If you don't know, El Maxo is a really popular TF2 YouTuber who mainly makes videos about big challenges such as playing a class for 100 days, getting 1000 kills without a headshot, or achieving 100 kill streaks. El Maxo made a post and a video talk about quitting his channel. In short, he says he's done with TF2 and video games for the most part. He has been thinking about quitting for over 6 months. He still likes making videos, so he's planning to start a new YouTube channel for real life content. He also explains why he wanted to quit. He talks about how making TF2 content was isolating himself, because it meant spending a lot of time in front of his PC and not needing to go outside. Almaxo says he wants to change his lifestyle. D this is just a brief explanation, I highly recommend reading his post and watching his video if you wanna learn more in depth. My explanation is too simple. Elmaxa was one of the best TFT YouTubers and it is definitely sad to see him go like this. Do you think it's a coincidence that he quit TFT after playing 100 days of Sniper? If you watch the video, you can see that he's literally forcing himself to play at his best, getting strange guns and setting challenges like getting 1000 kills with each sniper rifle. Clearly, all sniper players are mentally insane. I'm joking, obviously, but his videos really push the game to its limits. And we loved it. However, if El Maxo doesn't enjoy doing this anymore, he shouldn't for force himself. Personally, I definitely felt like this a couple of years ago when I was playing TF2 12 hours a day, recording clips, editing videos, making thumbnails, and trying to post two videos a single day. It was really isolating, I felt alone, spending all day in my room playing a game. Slowly, TF2 stopped being fun and became more of a chore or a job, but I wanted to keep it going and grow my YouTube channel. I pushed myself a lot and one day I couldn't anymore. Since then, there have been big gaps between my uploads. I too thought about quitting my channel, but I just like making videos, so I decided to stop forcing myself to make videos, be, be more relaxed about my upload schedule, and take breaks every now and then. I also have other hobbies such as streaming on Twitch, selfish plug, go follow me on Twitch. Anyways, we just hope the best for El Maxo. I believe if he makes a new YouTube channel, it will do as great as his current channel. One YouTuber is gone, but another one is back. Blue Panda is an incredibly talented animator who makes cute animations showing the mercenaries as hand puppets. A couple months ago, they decided to quit YouTube and pursue other interests. Now they're back. In the comment section, I found something really interesting. In the last video, I talked about the Omegatronic Rule 34 fan art on Reddit and how silly it was. Apparently, th that inspired Blue Panther to come back and make more animations. You know what, Reddit? I am sorry I adopted you. Keep drawing your weird fan art, I guess. Blue Panda also mentioned that making 10 minute videos every week was really tiring. That's actually insane. I remember animating on Source Filmmaker and it would take me multiple hours for a half minute animation, and Blue Panda did 10 minute animations on Blender every week. That's just insane, a lot of work. I am leaving all the links below in the video description. 
go subscribe to Blue Panda if you haven't already. They already have a big selection of videos to watch. Give them a nice warm welcome. I think they deserve more love. Next up, Critscast on the website X. Twitter was a much better name, not gonna lie. Anyway, Critscast decided to post really vague tweets with Valve logos, which let the people think they were working with Valve. David went far as to asking people what they would do to TF2. Later, Critscast had to explain themselves by saying, no, they're not working with Valve. They said they just thought the Valve logo looked cool and it was taken out of context. Obviously, Critscast just wanted to attract attention to their X account. If they really wanted to share these photos, they could have easily added a text saying that this notebook Valve logo looked really cool. Instead, they let people guess what was happening. Straight up engagement farming. I just hope they truly did this by accident and not on purpose. If it was on purpose, it would be real scummy. Especially when the TF2 fans are waiting for the next summer update and, and with Valve starting to ban cheaters, people are ready to hear great news about the future of this game. TF2 Source 2 might be dead, but that doesn't stop us from dreaming about it. Recently on X, the TF2 Source account shared what they were planning with the game. When they first started working on the project, they were planning to create a PvE campaign mode. And here's the concept art for the class selection for the campaign. It looks incredibly cool and just and just makes me sad that we are never gonna get this. There are many concept arts for enemies, maps, and missions. Just showing that TF2 Source 2 wasn't simply about copying the main game. There are also more art on the HUD elements such as the main menu. Also, apparently there were going to be upgradable weapons and classes for this campaign mode. And this was going to be 4 player co-op as well. I hope that one day Valve might hire these people. I think it would be really super cool to have a story campaign for TF2. Technically we have the Man vs Machine mode for PvE, but a proper story mode would be amazing. Alright, that's all the news for today. I know I have been focusing heavily on TF2 news videos lately. Don't worry, I'm not going to switch to text-to-speech or get sponsored by those gambling websites. Speaking of news, everyone is hoping the summer update drops soon. I'll be definitely making some videos about it once it's live. But also, I have some other bigger projects coming up soon. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and see you in the next video. Bye!